Hello, today we're going to look at the forces that act on objects that are on inclines. So far we've only looked at objects that were on nice, flat, horizontal surfaces. So we have an object that's on an incline. First thing we want to think about is, what is the tendency of the object's motion? Okay, what is the object going to do? And that, of course, is to slide down the incline. Okay, think about when you were on a kid and you went to the park and got on the slides. Okay? You, of course, slid down the slide, That's hence the name of the slide. The reason, though, is why do you do that? Okay, what causes you to slide down? And at this point, you should know that that is gravity that would cause you to slide down. But we know that gravity acts straight down, right? It doesn't act along the incline, at least not all of gravity. What's the only other force that we know at this point is definitely acting upon our object? Right, it's going to be the normal force. Okay, it's on this surface, and the normal force acts perpendicular up from the surface. So because our surface is at an angle now, our normal force is no longer just straight up in the air. Okay, it is now perpendicular to the surface, because here's the line that would continue down to where our surface is. Okay? Notice the normal force now is not balancing all of gravity. Okay? So if the normal force is not balancing all of gravity, that means that there's some gravity left over. And it's that component of the gravity that pulls you down the incline. Okay? So if we set this up, we know there's going to be some force that acts down the incline, and it ends up being a component. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a dashed line, and we'll just leave it right there for the time being. Okay? We know that our incline has to have some angle theta, angle of inclination there. And we're going to use that in order to help us determine some more information, help us determine what the Fn and this component force will be in terms of gravity. Okay? So if you look at the force of gravity now, that is the force that's going to be causing both the Fn and this component to be acting. So we're going to break up Fg into two components. Okay? The first one we're going to do is going to be the one that causes the normal force. Okay? And let's go ahead and put it here. And we're going to call that one Fg perpendicular because it acts perpendicular to the surface. Okay? The other force, the one that's going to cause it to go down the incline, I'm going to use the same color here. This should represent the same force. And that's going to be the Fg parallel because it acts parallel to the surface. Notice here that it's along the same line as the surface is, so they act parallel to the surface. Okay? Fn is going to be equal to Fg perpendicular because of Newton's third law. Remember that forces act in pairs. So in this case, gravity is pulling the block down to the surface. The surface then is supplying a force upward on the block. And that's where the normal force comes from. Remember, the normal force is just the supportive force. And so that's where the, that normal force is going to be equal to, in this case, is your Fg perpendicular. Okay? The Fg parallel is going to be the one that's pulling it down the incline because it's the component of the gravitational force that is not balanced by the normal force. Okay? So in our problem, we're going to list out our forces over here on the side. And we'll have Fg is the first one. Okay? Gravity is always present all the time. And that is always an object's mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And if we're looking at Earth, that is 9.8 meters per second squared. So mass times 9.8 meters per second squared will give us the object's weight in newtons. <clears throat> now we see that we have this triangle set up right here. And I told you already that Fn is equal to Fg perpendicular. Okay, so we need to come up with an expression for Fg perpendicular because our Fn will be equal to that. Our Fg parallel is the other one that's important, the other component of the gravitational force, and that's the one that's going to cause the object to accelerate down the incline. Okay, So we set this up, and now we need to come up with an expression for Fg parallel in order for us to solve for Fn. So we know this is our triangle where Fg is going to be our hypotenuse. Okay, So if we do that, we highlight that. See, there's our triangle. Fg is our hypotenuse. The one piece of information that we're missing is what is this angle right here? And that angle ends up being actually theta as well, okay? And if you really love geometry and you love proving triangles, you can prove 
based on using alternating interior angles and right angle rules that this angle theta right here is the same as this angle theta. However, this is not geometry class and I'm not gonna ask you to prove that. So if we set this up, we now see that this is our angle theta and we notice that FG or perpendicular is the side that is adjacent to our angle theta. And we know based on our vast knowledge of trigonometry that the trig function that relates the adjacent side and the hypotenuse is cosine. Very good, okay? So our Fn, our normal force, is gonna end up being equal to Fg cosine theta because it equals the Fg perpendicular based on Newton's third law. Okay, forces occur in pairs and that's where that comes from. Okay, now we have to look at the Fg parallel, the other component of the gravitational force. And if we look at our triangle, we notice the Fg parallel is the opposite side from our angle theta. So we're going to plug that in and remember the trig function that relates the opposite side, the hypotenuse and the angle theta, that of course is sine. So our Fg parallel is going to be equal to Fg sine theta, okay? These equations are sometimes difficult to remember. So your options are either drawing out this triangle every time to remember them, or you can use a couple of quick rules to think about that. The first one is to look at them in terms of just alphabetical order, okay? Remembering that N comes before P, remember that's really parallel, and cosine comes before sine. So one easy way, alphabetical order. The other way you can think of it, and this is one of my personal favorite things in the entire world, is to think of the great song, Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne, okay? If you've ever been to the Braves game when Chipper Jones was playing, you know that that was his walk-up song. And Crazy Train starts with Ozzy saying, I, 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 and the way that I always remember that is parallel symbol looks kind of like two eyes, right? So I, I, and sine, of course, has an I in it. So you remember that parallel, Fg parallel, is equal to Fg times sine theta because of Ozzy Osbourne. And that's what Ozzy was thinking about back in, you know, 1980 when he wrote that song. The other, or the way to remember then, uh, normal force would be the fact that this is N and O, so no, and your favorite word, and my child's favorite word is no. So the N and the O go together to help you remember that cosine goes along with normal, okay? The other forces that could be acting on this, of course, would be some kind of applied force if it's being pulled up or pushed down. Um, and the other force that could be acting on, of course, is friction. And our equation for friction, just to remind ourselves, is mu times the normal force. And in this case, our equation for normal force is Fg cosine theta. When we first started talking about forces, we said that there was no equation for the normal force. It was situation dependent. And this is the only situation in which there is this equation for the normal force. You cannot use this equation, this relationship, any other time to solve for the normal force. Only when objects are on inclines and there's no other forces acting in this direction. Okay, in that perpendicular direction. If you've got a force coming in this way, or if you've got a force that's pushing down or pulling up, then Fn will not equal that. It'll equal some combination of that plus the other forces. But remember, the only time you can use this Fn equals Fg cosine theta is when the object is on an incline, not when it's on a horizontal surface. Thanks for watching. Thanks.